Hey everyone, it's Shell from Shell Shell Crochet. Welcome to my July 2024 crochet podcast. Let's talk some summer makes and Christmas in July. It's Shell. How are you today? I hope you're all doing well. Today is um, Tuesday, July the 30th, and I am going to hopefully get this podcast out by tomorrow, the last day of July. July has been much better for me, Crojo wise, so let's get into it. And rather than keep you waiting this time, let's talk about this. But first, we have to go back in time and look at a little bit of a clip. Hey everyone, today is Tuesday, July the 23rd, and I am working on a summer cardi that I'm a boarding mission on. <laughs> I have it pretty much put together and it's not working out the way I wanted it to, so I am just unseaming parts and I'm going to see what it will turn into next. I made 22 granny squares and two triangle squares for this and I made extra rows for um, the side panels and then the top of the shoulder and I'm out of yarn and one, one of the reasons I'm taking it apart is I don't like the structure of how I put it together. The other reason is that it's far too heavy for what I want it to be. So I have two ideas of what I might turn it into. And we will see which one wins. This is some salvaged cotton, um, Karen cotton ripple cake. So it's the 100% cotton version. And you can see all the seaming and all the ends. <laughs> so this is, a lot of work has gone into this in the last week or so. Um, but uh, I learned a lot. And I am disappointed, but I'm happy that I'm going to keep going and make it what I really want it to be. So there's a small chance it's still gonna be a wearable, but there's a bigger chance it will be an accessory. And you guys will see more right now. Back to our regularly scheduled programming. Yeah, so take two, because originally this was a tank top that I made years ago that I put some sleeves on and didn't really get to wear much. So I took it all apart and I started to make some granny squares out of it. Not in love with that old, I don't know if they make this version anymore, but the Karen Cotton Ripple Cakes. I think those ones were 100% cotton as opposed to the blends that a lot of the cotton cakes are. And they were also ripply. <laughs> so basically the yarn went thick to thin very, very quickly in like one to two inch bursts. <laughs> and uh, I don't really see the point of that. It, it creates a texture that is useless for me when I'm crocheting with it, but I like the color and I like the color for um, just a different something to wear in the warmer weather. So I was able to turn it into a poncho. So I did the little modeling at the very beginning of the video today instead of making you wait till the end. And I'm gonna see if I can wear it throughout. It is rather warm in here today, but we'll do our best, right? So here's a picture where I'm showing you how I ended up laying out the squares once I took the little shrug apart. And I had to make a few more squares to have a front and a back panel. And once I had the pink part done, I just used the rest of this um, gray that I had been using in my blanket um, to make the trim. And it worked out really well. Anyway, so I use a seven millimeter hook for all of the pink and I think most of the gray. I probably sized down the hook a little bit for the trim, but that's about that. If you have any questions, let me know. I got interrupted because there was some noise coming from upstairs. So hopefully that all worked well when I edit it together. <laughs> Let's move on to some of the little so I can get them out of the way. We have some finished objects. This was the last skein of Red Heart All in One Granny Square I had out on my cart. So previously to this, I had had Pink Punch and, and the uh, Cyberleaf out, and I had a skein of Hyperviolet. So at the very beginning of July, I made up the rest of the squares, 
And one of these squares got into that bag I made a couple of months ago. So I did get 15 squares out of this skein as well. Um, I probably had about five of them done. So I probably made about 10 in the month of July. I got inspired to try something with an old jean jacket of mine that I had previously already cut off the sleeves for and I've used it a lot at Halloween. I've made it look all spooky and gruesome at times but I've taken all of that off the jacket so that the uh, vest is still there. I'll pop up a picture here and I thought maybe I could put granny square sleeves on it and then when I started playing around with it I just didn't think I would like the outcome but I did finish a whole skein of hyperviolet. I think uh, some of them were already done. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. No, you know what? I must have gone to grab some of them that were already done. So I probably did about eight of these or so in the beginning of July. So I'm just gonna set those aside for now. Um, if anybody's new, I have a Granny Square yarn vlogs from the beginning of the year where I talk about using the yarn and I've been using the Granny Square yarn on and off throughout this Whole year so there's lots of information in the other videos if you have any questions let me know and there's one more granny square project that I started working on so here are the two yarns I'm using to make my mom something for either her birthday or Christmas her birthday's in October and uh, I also have a 12 days project I'm working on for her for Christmas and these are how the squares are gonna end up looking so the outside is that loops and threads soft classic yarn and the inside is the all one granny square yarn which this one is called soft white shadow that's what i thought it was called soft white shadow so how many did i get done one two three four five six seven so i got seven done so about eight more to go in this skein uh, that's if I haven't already used one for something like that bag. I might have used one in that bag that I made earlier this year. So anyway, there's this much to go in this skein and then I have two more. Um, so that sits on my cart. So if I'm ever just looking for something mindless to do, I can work on that. So that is project number two with the Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square Yarn. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, July the 17th and I have a finished object. This is Red Heart All-in-One Granny Square Yarn in Citrus Twist, Amethyst, Pink Punch, Frigid, and Hot Stuff. Those are all in the soft white um, color waves. And I am doing my take on the Elspeth scarf, or I guess I did it. <laughs> so this is um, one of my sides and it's repeated going the other way. And I don't know if you guys remember, but way back when I was testing out the yarn, I made myself a granny square to test if I could make it any faster changing the yarns I myself. And spoiler alert, I did not. I made them faster with this. And that was when I didn't know what I was doing. Here's the one that I have in the middle, which I think is a fairly good representation of colors. I actually changed out the original color I had as the green and put the spring green because I thought it went nicer with those oranges. Um, and then I had a bunch of Bernat uh, Super Value white that I used to trim the entire thing and any squares that needed it. I also made use of some scraps for the hot stuff colorway. So this is what I had left from the actual yarn. So I used my own red and my own um, corally color. Um, so this is a little less deep in the actual yarn and this is a little brighter, but it works just fine and it allows me to use up some of the extra yarn that was in the skeins. So it'll be something like that. This needs a quick block, which I like to just have hubby throw acrylic that's allowed in the dryer to go in the dryer for a few minutes to soften it up and I'll give it a nice good stretching after. And that will be the scarf. So the wonderful Krista from The Secret Yarnery put out a little bit of a challenge in a cow for um, doing things that are Elspeth ins inspired because there's so much crochet in that show. Um, and I'll link Krista's video in the description box below so that you can see where she talks about it. And here is my version of the Elspeth scarf. Let's start in the middle. I think I might have taken a clip of this as well, but I'll just take you all through. So the sides match and I made up a square for the center, which is that one there. I'll talk about it in a sec. And then we go back down this way. 
So I think it's um, perfectly fine and warm enough the way it is. I didn't feel like I needed to double it and fold it over. I know that's more traditionally the way that Elspeth has her scarf in the show. And I also just wanted to make use of all these different colorways from the Red Heart all-in-one granny square uh, white. Anyway, so I had taken off the dark green I had originally put on there and put some spring green to make it look like it goes. And then I just decided to match up the, the squares going down. And I think it's gonna look really nice that way. Um, I'm not gonna put it on right now because it's already hot, uh, but I will make a hat to go with it. So I will bring it back and show you the set together in the cooler weather. Uh, I put two finishing rounds of granny stitch around the entire thing. And then I put a round of single crochet and you can see that it's nice and tight. It's a little bit bowy right now, which is how I like it. It hasn't gone in the dryer yet. And when it goes in the dryer, it'll loosen up nicely and be a little bit softer. And it'll probably grow by about an inch or two overall, uh, in length, not in width. <laughs> anyway, um, that was my participation in, uh, Chris's little challenge. And it was fun to do and it was using up squares that were already made so last month i was mentioning that my crojo took quite a hit in june and all of a sudden about halfway through july it dawned on me the reason it did was i just don't think i had enough going on and i had some finicky things that i wasn't too keen on working on both of which are behind me um that i was probably feeling a little bit of pressure to finish before i started other things so i went the opposite route in july and i just worked on whatever i wanted to work on and i brought a lot of color back um, one of the things that I planned to do that I told you about was Christmas in July and we did accomplish some Christmas in July. Good morning everybody. Today is Tuesday, July the 9th and I am just about to get into some Christmas in July with all this cotton. So we'll see what these lovelies can turn into to be part of some gifts I've got planned for my dad and my stepmother and then my mom for their 12 days packages. I'm going to make them. Hello everyone. I thought I would do a little update on the fact that I have been doing a little bit of Christmas in July. Um, and I started off with the remnants of a big handicrafter skein in this, uh, I want to call it mistletoe colorway. I can't remember exactly if that's the one it was called. It is so old. I think I literally got this at the first tent sale I ever went to in like May of 2017 or something like that. And this is probably... Like, I know this is not one whole piece of yarn. It's been uh, frocked from other things, I think. So it's got some joins in it. So I have, I'm using the big one first because I know it's the newer part. And then I have this green, which was also a huge skein at one point. And then these little bits and pieces. So what I started off with was actually a, this cotton. The cotton from Michael's uh, that was gifted to me last Christmas by Crystal. So I had one in green and that's what's left but I've been making things and that's why I was going for this darker green first. It's a little closer to what's in there. So the first thing I made was a granny stitch dishcloth, just straight back and forth, a rectangular cloth with the green trim. The next thing I did was a star. So smaller, but cute. The next thing I did was a circle and some solid stitches in the middle, some V stitches, just playing with it, kind of similar to how I work my mandalas, but I wanted a little more solid. And then the last one I did was an actual granny square. And then I just did an extra round in the green and then the border round. So I have this much left and my mom actually has a red bathroom. So rather than trim with red because of, I didn't want the colors to be too, uh, Similar or two different. Um, I thought I'd trim in green for her and she'll just get a little bit of red accent this way. She can decide whether she wants any of this in her bathroom. I think this might be just enough to, to top uh, trim the, the soap bottle cozies I make, the pump soap bottle cozies. So I think I'm going to try to make her one of those and trim that. And then my mom can have all these um, at Christmas time and one of her 12 days gifts. And I will be able to still uh, make some other stuff for my dad and my stepmother uh, with the remaining colors here, some solid, some variegated, and that has been my Christmas in July so far. So I had a bunch of this from Spin Right, probably the very first tent sale I went to, or maybe the second one, um, cotton. So Handicrafter cotton. And first of all, I had some solid green that I was using as a trim. So we just have a rectangular granny stitch washcloth. 
And then we have a regular granny square washcloth. And we have a star granny stitch cloth or, you know, these can also just be put on your counter so you can put hot things down on them and you don't have to worry. Or under things to make them look extra festive and a circular one. This one I just made up as I went around. It's solid in the middle and there's some open stitches around the outside. It's hard to see in this yarn. Uh, you'll take my word for it. And then we moved on to some reds. So we have like an eight point star here. I'll pop up a picture here. I actually blocked these ones. This one was very wavy when I was done it. Um, I know Crystal has a Crystal from Bagade has a blanket that starts this way that I'm interested to make at some point. I haven't started one yet because for Project Linus, which is where the focus of most of my blankets are going to for the charity this year, um, they need specific sizes and they're rectangular shape. There's nothing that's not rectangular shape. So I don't have a good reason to make a blanket that's not, even though I loved the look of that one. Um, but anyway, I used the beginning of it to inspire me to try, although I wasn't paying attention to the tutorial, so I'm not so sure if I did it right. Anyway, it blocked out, so it's fine. A regular star with some picots at the very edges. And then this one is more of a hexagon that I put some shells around the outside. So those are the ones that I trimmed in red. Um, variety of hook sizes, usually for the handicraft or cotton, I use like a, a five and a half or a six. Um, and then sometimes for the edging, I'll go down a half a step just to have it nice and firm and tight because hopefully those will get lots of use because the whole reason to do things in cotton is because it's so durable and uh, have some gift planning. They can be for like make ahead stash or they can just be for actual gifts, but I wanted to make sure I got that done. And I, do, I have a very little bit of that yarn left and I want to make at least one pump soap cover. So that's a plan for the rest of that cotton before I do anything else with it. And then I'll be down to like some just plain red, green and white that I can still do things with if I want. And then the other thing I did was I grabbed the little bit of sparkle scraps that I have left out that is not currently put away. Um, and I made some of these, some Santa sacks. So this is just regular 100% acrylic yarn, size four. Uh, they were probably burn up premium sparkle yarns. I, I'm pretty sure both of them were. So the red one is just silver sparkle. And then the white one, it's just an iridescent sparkle. So it doesn't really um, show up too well. I'm not so sure if you'll see it at all, but it also doesn't like stand out too much, which I kind of like. So that is number one. Oh, and I was just making use of some of these charms I had and sticking them on the bottom to make it a little more festive. Uh, with a drawstring on both cases. I'll, I'll talk about that in one sec. And here's the second one that's the same. So in order to get some bling into this guy, I used sort of a soft worsted yarn tent sail, soft worsted red, held double with an old patents, um, I have it here. It's an old patents thin, thin yarn that is a, a sparkly striped yarn. So you can see that the sparkle is not the same throughout. There is a tiny bit of sparkle throughout, but then there's these patches where it's very sparkly. And I've never really liked that because the stretches are not this, not consistent and it's, they're not very long. Um, so it hasn't worked great for, for being able to hold double and have a consistent look. For something like this, it, it does work great. And for this one, I just decided to put beads on the bottom and I still had more of the white. So the white um, was no problem for the top. It's a bit denser because it was the two yarns held together, um, but that's fine. It's just a little Santa sack. And I have a little bit more of this and the red, so we'll see if I want to make any more. I also have a tiny little bit of this green, um, and then the sparkle white is here. So I still have a little um, basket beside me of yarns that can get used for Christmas in July. Uh, I guess Christmas in July is officially over, so it will just be used for Christmas prep, for being prepared um, whenever I need little projects to work on that will be useful. Okay, so if you have any questions about any of those, let me know. You can see that the cotton ripple blanket is behind me on the couch. It is finished. Um, I don't think I took any more clips. If I do, I'll put them here. Happy Sunday, everybody. Today is July the 7th. Coffee is just finished and I have my table all set up from the Mandela coaster and my little, um, what am I gonna call the thing that I put my Brita on? A huge coaster for my Brita? <laughs> Um, so those are the summer colors and uh, this guy is done. So I went with the concept of using up all the yarn 
and I actually worked at the bottom and the top to put in an extra panel. Let me just see here. So this would actually be the bottom and here is where I put that single crochet row on and I did another set. So I had the most left of this um, driftwood colorway and I maximized that by getting an extra four rows and then here's the top. So pretty. And I will show it one more time on camera just so you can get a better sense of the length of it. Um, I'll either take it laid out on the floor or get Chris to hold it up or something, but it's nice and big. Um, when I have my legs up on the ottoman, it covers my feet like I wanted and it comes all the way up to my shoulders. And I used up pretty much all the yarn. We grab the basket. So this is what I had left. This was the extra gray. I didn't use that much of that was the cake that was uh that one what was that one grayscale and then this was what was left of the coral and this is what was left of the two cakes um yeah so these were uh you know i guess three regular cakes and a bunch of scraps that got into this guy and i'm super happy with it and it's perfect it is just enough to let you feel cozy on the couch with the fan on, it doesn't make you warm, but it makes you cozy. Okay, friends, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, I don't think I did though, so I will take a little bit of video of it laid out either on the couch or the bed and add it to the very end of the video. Um, I talked enough about it last time in June and a little bit in May. All the yarns are in those previous videos, so I'll link that in the description box below. Happy it's done. I got it done at the very beginning of July and um, I'm very happy with the outcome. Um, I had said last time though that I wanted to use all the yarn and there was some of the gray left. I decided to not do a trim on that blanket so it was great to be able to use it up in the poncho instead. Going way back to the very beginning of the month, I had seen these I think on Instagram, I'm not sure exactly, the idea of just putting a headband on a hair tie to give yourself um, more size adjustability. And I was playing with some of the tiny cotton I got from Dollarama that I talked about in the last couple months videos. And I just made myself a striped one for Canada Day. Uh, so this was done at the very beginning, well, very end of June after the last video, but before July 1st. And I did wear that on Canada Day. And then I had another headband that I wasn't getting any use of. Uh, I took off a few of the colors that I had already put on it. And then I just attached it to this gray um, scrunt, uh, hair tie and then I, I have a, a darker one as well. So this part was already made but I just used the same idea to sew it attached and then you have it nice and stretchy and it can go on your hair. I, and again I'm not going to put it on because it's warm in here and I'm barely making it through with a poncho on but uh, if I find that tutorial um, or if you know what it is just mention it in the comments below so other people will know but it is really, you could do that to any headband you like. You just need to start by either working onto the hair tie or you need to make your end a little bit uh, thin so that you can wrap it around and sew it on after. Um, but it is very adjustable that way and those are very quick makes. I'm gonna try and stick to chronological order for the rest of the video so that I can keep track of where I'm supposed to be at. And one of the things that happened early on was the Jada and Stitches calendar blanket, Granny's Magical Cupboard. I think that's the name. Um, so this, this um, month's square is a spiked stitch. Now on mine, <laughs> they don't show so much because how the yarn is coming out of the cake. So here, just a little refresher. This is the yarn I started with. I had two of these. Uh, there's all these colors in it and there's a lot of variation in color. It looks very bright in this cake, but it's actually got a lot of variations of color in it. So here's the first one. And I'll hold it closer to the camera in a stack. And here's the second one. Where possible when the squares are, because um, I'm making two of each square each month and where possible, I'm trying to link the color a little bit. So that's why I use the, the lime on the outside of this one. For the most part, I'm using the yarn as it's coming out of the cake. Good morning, everybody. Today is Sunday, July the 14th. And I was working on my square for Jada's Magical's Granny's Cupboard Crochet Along the Calendar Blanket, which is the spiked granny for July. 
And my yarn was this yarn here, Karen Big Cakes, in the colorway Blue Hawaii. And um, I don't think I'm going to make it. I thought I had a lot. I thought I was going to be able to get 15 squares per cake. And I guess they're taking up more, some of them, than others. So uh, because it's solid, though, you don't get to see the spike stitches as much. But uh, it was very interesting square. It was very hard for me to do the spike part because of the way I hold my yarn and my tension. There, I zoomed in so you can see a little bit better where the spike stitches are. Anyway, uh, she's done and she's eight inches exactly. So yay to the gauge part. Um, however, I have come to the conclusion that I won't have enough yarn. So I did do something about that this month as well. Uh, I think that this blanket for Project Linus will be best if it's at least 30 squares so that I can do five by six. I'm giving myself the option of even maybe doing seven by five, uh, just so that I know it's a nice size blanket because I'm trying to focus on tween and teen for them this year because those are the blankets that they need the most of. So anyway, those are the spiked granny stitch. There's all kinds of beautiful versions of this on the Facebook group, if you're in the Jada Stitches Facebook group, um, which I've popped in to see, and also Jada's posting them in the community tab. Um, so I didn't love this square. A lot of people really liked it. Um, it was really crunching down my stitches below, just based on how I hold the yarn, I think. So that was a bit of a struggle for me. I may have had a clip about that already. And then I decided to pull out a yarn that I for sure will be able to make match and go well with this project. I have this one skein of Karen One Pound in this pretty green, which is called Hosta. So this is going to be the additional squares and trim. So I will go back around all of the grannies, probably just with a single crochet because they already have a single crochet on them. And then I will use it for the outside um, in terms of um, a border. So I won't run out of it that way for sure. And uh, I just don't think that this cake feels as robust as the first one did. I may have dipped into it a little bit for um, colors. It's possible it was even used in a previous project where I just needed a little bit of something. I don't know, but um, I think this way, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that the blankets don't scream um, bright girl colors, that they're neutral, gender neutral type blankets, because I don't think that um, they're getting as much for teen boys either. So I'm trying to accomplish that, at least have that option available for them. And as per usual, when I'm uh, filming this, already this Friday will be August, so I will get a new square to work on then. Let's bring this guy into play. I think I do have some clips of him first. Hey everyone, today is Monday, July the 8th, and look what's finished. My version of the wall hanging that Jada and Stitches has been working on live for the last several weeks, it's a bag. And I talked about this in my May video, and all I had to do was finish up some appliques and get them all slimmed down, and this is what I went with. So I think that is gonna be really great one of my girlfriends is really into unique crocheted items and this will be part of her birthday gift. Here's the rest of the strap. <clears throat> so we have a green and teal strap crossbody to go with the bag. And the bulk of uh, what I talked about in terms of this project was in my May video, which will be linked in the description box below. Uh, and yeah, that video didn't get nearly as many views as it mostly it does. And I'm not sure if that's because I separated out Crystal Shawl that month. But if you want to check it out, it's linked in the description box. And back to our regularly scheduled programming. So I managed to get it all finished this month and sew everything down and commit to that process. We have a garden, we have a ladybug, we have a couple butterflies and a bee, the sun, the clouds, the trees, and a strap. And I have some buttons. I got these specially, oh, my, my sticky note fell down. Um, I got these specially for this project because the girl that it's for really loves daisies. So that I, put, I decided to put them here to bring it in, um, in more than one spot over here as well. And this is where I put the closure. So initially I tried to make the closure look like a cloud on the front, but I found that it was interfering too much. So I decided to put it on back, on the back. And I think it's just fine. So I have a little thin piece of acrylic here that I may actually go back over 
her hands probably work better than mine so she won't have as much trouble doing it up but there you go just a nice little closure there so nothing will fall out it's a nice dense bag so i'm not too worried about that part and i'll tell her to use things that um can hold her her things inside the bag if she wants to do it that way so i think i talked enough about it this has been on and off my plate since may and i'm really happy to have it all done sewing it on wasn't the easiest if i was ever to do this type of a project again i would seam up the bag after i put all the appliques on because it's really hard to do your uh, appliques through something that's already a bag uh, sewing wise especially with cotton because it's so hard on your hands uh, when you want to get that in there nice and tightly but the outcome I think is great and I'm happy I participated in a different way with the wall hanging crochet along that Jada was doing in the spring. I briefly mentioned last month that I had done one more of my blocks. I've been talking about these blocks on and off for a while. Um, I had the idea of doing some corner to corner blocks with a certain kind of yarn and being able to make a blanket out of them. I had uh, six 85 gram skeins of loops and threads speckled stripes, which I believe what they ended up doing was discontinuing it all together and then bringing it back at separate. So they have now I think speckles or stripes, but not a combination. And this yarn was purchased probably in like 2020 or 2021 for $2 a skein. They are small skeins, 85 grams, but we have all 12 done now. So red was done this month, two blues were done this month, two greens were done this month, um, and that's, oh, and two blacks, two blacks? One black, one black was done this month. Yeah, so one red, because the other red was already done, and then two blues and two greens, and then everybody got the trim color. So I'll show you some of the other colors in a sec. I think I actually have a picture. Um, so there are 12 and way back when i had done a little clip for you guys where one of the yarns i purchased was actually not speckled stripes it was just loops and threads and variegated colorway and it was thinner and it wasn't what i needed in terms of them going well because they're all the same kind of yarn but this one i just wanted to be crazy colorful for whoever gets it and i was playing around by taking pictures of all the squares where is she gonna put them um I took pictures of all the squares and I'm playing around with the layout and I think I have one that I like so I'll pop that up for you as well and I'm just gonna quickly move the other colorways over that were previously done this is the one that I invented myself so I used some soft classic yarn in here along with the spec with a variegated that was what I purchased to make it look similar to these other ones and these were the ones that I had done earlier so there are 12 you see that picture up on the screen and that one probably won't be too terrible to put together in the warm weather so i may work on that one in august we'll see um but yeah i'm in good shape to have uh at least two blankets to be putting together in september and then i'll have the calendar blanket to put together at the end of the year so that's all working out well for project linus the second one would be these guys I'm gonna pop up a picture here and I'll just show you a couple the strip I'm doing for this blanket is just the January one that Jada did when she did the mighty mile a minute blanket it's just like the corner of a granny square so it's just the shell the two shells together so I'm doing 77 um, sets all the way up to get the length and then the finishing it off to square it out and then the trim goes on after that so I dug out my mam strips and I've made burgundy reef or dark teal it's called reef at michael's and then this purple which was a scrap i also made a mint one and i have 11 now so i may make one more to or no i have 12 now i may make one more to make it uh 13 because i think the last time i did the man blanket i did 13 to get the nice measurements working out uh because it's going to be a donation blanket as well the reason I said 11 and then 12, I have one that's actually already trimmed in black and I think it's on the picture. Uh, that was the orange from way back. And then I had a bunch of them that were already made, but all together now there are 12 strips. So I will be putting some black on them in August to have them all ready to be sewn together. I may join as you go them after I put the black on, but I'm gonna make sure that they all have black on them first. And then if I want a little more width by adding, by joining them that way, I could do it that way. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, uh, like I said, I was um, 
feeling more motivated having more options so i don't know why but it just dawned on me it's just the fact that i didn't have enough whips on the go and i also really like the type of whip that's modular because that way i get the sense of finishing something as well so i have all these uh granny square projects or my mile a minute projects and corner to corner projects where i get to actually finish something that's part of something bigger so it's like finished object and a whip <laughs> Okay, so then the last thing I did was I took out all my yarn. There was one day where I was just sitting around and I didn't feel like crocheting necessarily, but I wanted to play with yarn. And I had, have had an idea for a while now of a scrap gain project that I wanted to work on. And what, and I'll pop up some pictures here. I don't think I have a clip, but if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on now. Um, these were all different scraps I had. Some of them were already just balls. Most of them were partial skeins, so they were significant. And I caked everything up and I started to go through the process of weighing them all so that I could work a scrap gan from the smallest scrap I had all the way up to the largest scrap I had. And then what I decided to do is every few rows, every five, six, seven, eight, wherever I decide to land, I'm gonna put a stripe of black with one single row. Most of the time I'm going to get at least two rows out of these scraps because it's going to grow uh, bigger and bigger and bigger and that means the yarn won't go as far, right? Uh, I'll show you in one sec but because I actually started it. I didn't really intend to start it but I did start it. Um, and so yeah, that was kind of a nice motivating way to get organized for another project. And here's what I have so far. It's going to be a rectangular granny uh, blanket. And so the tiniest scrap was that peony pink color. And uh, when I was trying to weigh it, it wouldn't even give me a weight because uh, I knew I had just very little of this. So I, this is what I had done for like two weeks, just this little section right here. And then the, this turquoise was the next smallest. Then they have this heathered purple. And then I decided to, that's when I decided to bring black in to uh, start giving it that, that pop that black or white can give projects. So then I went to cream, a forest green. The forest green I only got one row of, which is fine. Uh, a medium purple, the black again. We have a, a sunny yellow color, jade, and a... I know this one was called celestial blue because I got it from the tent sale years ago, and it's a bit of a heathered blue. Um, so yeah, so this thing is, is starting to grow already, and I'll be able to put a little bit more on it before it gets too hot to work on in August, but this will be sort of a August, September, October, um, make and I have all the yarn so set aside and also because I've weighed it um, we'll see how much of it actually ends up in the project but for the most part I'll have an idea by weight with four weight acrylic yarn how much I need to make a, a similar size blanket in the end so that's it's kind of handy to know too if you want to get really specific you could weigh your blanket weigh the yarn you're using and then weigh in between your rounds and know how much your rounds are taking up. So there's a lot of different things you can do if you really wanna pay attention to something like this and then have it to fall back on later on. So uh, that was just fun for my brain to be active in a different way. And there is a side project to it. So a few years ago, I had a bunch of magic balls so these are the much, much smaller ends all rolled into a ball, um, which I love in a way too because the colors reveal themselves as you go through. Right now I can see the red and the, the jade and some, I think, variegated yarns underneath, maybe a little gray, some bright magenta underneath. I'll have a little bit of scraps from the corner to corner project to throw into this. Um, but I purposely had finished all the ends on the one I've shown you so far, which wasn't terrible actually. But here's an idea. So I've, I've thought of a scarf with this magic ball for a while now, and I've just started it. I actually have not even finished increasing yet. I just, um, I want this to be a little bit deeper than the other one. Where'd it go? Let's find it. So here's the grainy square scarf again. So just to give an idea, I am now about two inches wider than the grainy square scarf. So I'm almost at the point where I will stop increasing on one side and then all of my um, stripes will just be angular going up which I'm gonna really really like um, so again just started this with a tiny little bit of that purple heather after it went into the blanket so this will either be coming directly from the blanket or from this magic ball here I'll just be going back and forth and I just wanted to show you how many ends I already have 
I haven't sewn any of these in on purpose just to let you know that it's not for the faint of heart if you don't like doing ends to do a scrap project this way. I don't mind it. Sometimes if I'm just tired of crocheting or if it's really hot, I'll save the ends for something like that. If I want to be paying a little more attention to watching something on television or I don't have to be looking at what I'm doing or counting or anything like that, I'll just sit there and sew in my ends. I don't mind it. Um, but yeah, this one's going to be really cute when it's done as well. Um, I haven't decided yet. I do have the little bit of black in here and I've used it once. I may do the same thing and every once in a while just put some black in there because I have a lot of black scraps. Uh, few, several, several years ago, the one time I bought tangled uh, yarn from Cambridge Fibers, I got a lot of black in those bags. So I still have a lot of black scraps that could go into this if I want them to. But um, this is going to be the fun, most fun for me is just this guy right here, uh, watching it come out of itself and reveal the colors that I really enjoy. Yeah, so that was July and is going to be our August too, because I have a few things that I'll be able to continue to work on. Um, I'll pop up a picture here. Uh, Crystal had let me know that she found some yarn really crazy on clearance at Walmart. And so hubby was going to Walmart anyway. And I said, just dig around and see if you find anything. And he actually did. Um, I had uh, the most expensive yarns he picked up for me were two skeins of a um, Bernat blanket in a corally color with some gold sparkle in it, which is really beautiful. And it's close enough to a color I was looking for for a specific project that I'll talk about probably next month or in September for a specific gift. And the rest was just too good to pass up. He got me two skeins for a dollar of this Lime Brand yarn. I'll put the name up at the bottom of the screen. And then he found me two other skeins of the Bernat Blanket, the big ones. One is all different blues and variegated um, aqua-y, yellowy tones, which will be great for octos. Uh, and was like $5. And then the black and gray and white one was three bucks. So I wasn't leaving it there. I might make a pillow cover with that one. But for those prices, it was just fun to get him to grab that and bring it home. And so you may see some stuff from me in August. I may do a few octos and definitely that other project that I was talking about, which will have to be stuffed in a different way. <laughs> So overall, really happy with how July went, happy with all the variety, happy with all the color, happy to have things done like that guy and that guy. Um, and I'm really happy with this too. Uh, it, it was really neat how it ended up working out. The um, way I assembled the squares after has given me some ideas for future projects. So all in all, pleased with July and looking forward to August and I hope you guys have been having a great summer so far. We are going to have a chance to get away for a few days in August, which will be nice. And other than that, just going to enjoy the good weather while it's here and see what I can get up to crochet wise. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you being here. Have a great day and happy crochet. Bye.